Hello again, it's Karen at the Cool Tools Studio, and I'm here to show you guys how I used the cuff bracelet that I made in the floral cuff two-way video as a platform for Champlevé enameling. Before we dive right in, here's what you're gonna need for this project. I have a palette that I've loaded up with my enamels. For this particular project, I'm using Victoria Red, Flame Red, Mistletoe Green, and Jungle Green. I've got a brush, some clear fire, some surfactant, and then a medium scotch bright. I also have both a 240 and 120 grit alumnum stone, 220, 320, 400, and 600 sandpaper. Let's get started. I have here a finished copper cuff. If you haven't yet seen the first video, please refer to that on how to make this bracelet. Unlike the first video, however, this one was made with a four cards thick background and a three cards thick front pattern piece. That way it's a little bit thicker to support the enameling. I've prepared this for enameling and since it's gonna have enamel placed into the low areas, you wanna make sure you very thoroughly clean it. I did so using the surfactant and a scotch bright and just scrubbing it really, really well. That gets rid of the grease and has your piece prepared for receiving enamel. Let's move on to wet packing this piece. So since this cuff is going to be fired laying like this, I'm gonna be packing using straight clear fire mixed in with my enamel. You don't wanna dilute it because the tackiness in the clear fire is gonna help your enamel stay in place while you're firing. So I'm just gonna load these guys up with some clear fire. And you don't want your enamels to be too wet because then they'll be hard to control and they'll run out of your cells. So you're looking for kind of a damp sand consistency. And that looks good. So I'm gonna go ahead and mix in clear fire with all my other enamels. And then in the center here, I've got just regular water for rinsing your brush. So now that I have my enamels here ready with the clear fire in them, we're ready to wet pack. Since we're just applying the enamel into these cells, and there's supporting metal around them, and we have a nice thick back to our piece, we do not need to apply a counter enamel to the inside. If you'll notice on this cuff, I liked to blend from a, the darker red to the lighter red. I just think it kind of adds a little bit of dimensionality to the piece. So we're gonna start with our dark red on the inside and then pack in the light red on the outside. So I'm just picking up the enamel on my brush. and trying to work it in. Try to keep it in the cells, but don't worry too much about getting it on the copper because you will have the opportunity to stone and clean up your edges. Coax them into that thin area there. You can brush away enamel off the copper. It'll make your life a little easier when it comes to stoning. Now I'm gonna come in with my lighter red and work my way towards the middle where I'm gonna try to blend them into a gradient. So I'm just kind of working my way back and forth in between the two colors now to kind of give them a subtle blend. So that looks good. I'm gonna move on to my other petals. 
And when you're packing, um, you're going to have to do several firings. It's going to kind of sink and settle on you when it's in the kiln. And that's fine. If you pack thickly, it'll probably end up being two. If you're a thin packer, it might end up being three. But just take your time and enjoy the process. I think this is a lot of fun. I'm going to keep on packing this cuff, and then we'll pick up and talk about how we're going to fire it. So I've worked my way around, and I filled all of my little cells with enamel. And now we're going to move it onto a firing rack to fire. Since there's not enamel that's going to be touching the firing rack, you don't have to use mica or anything like that. You can just set it directly onto the firing rack. You'll want to make sure your enamel is dry before you fire it. You can fire these anywhere from 1450 to 1500. When you're firing, you'll want to keep an eye on them, but you don't have to watch them as closely as you do with plique jour or cloisonne. You don't have to worry about melting wires or them pulling away from the edges since you've got a back on it. You're just going to look for your enamel to fuse. So this is my piece now that it's fired and cooled. And if you'll notice, it kind of has an oxidization on the surface there that will flake off. And before you start packing your next layer, you're going to want to clean this with the surfactant and the scotch Brite again before you pack in your next layers. Otherwise, you're going to get the little black particles into your enamel. Um, some people pickle their enamels. Um, I don't like to. If you don't keep an eye on it, some of your colors will etch and you have really to thoroughly clean them before they go back in the kiln. I find it's easiest to just use a scotch Brite. So I gave this a quick cleaning, and it doesn't have to be perfect. You just want to clean off the surface there so black pieces won't fall into your enamels. So you're just going to pack on top of the first layer, just like you did the first time. And I hadn't pointed this out yet, but what was really amazing is my cuff kept its shape perfectly in the kiln. It didn't close or warp or distort or anything like that. Um, which is really nice because sometimes copper will move on you in the kiln. <laughs> so you're just going to pack your second layer just like your first and this might be your last layer or you might need one more after that. But treat it just like your first and I'm just going to keep on packing. So I packed that second layer pretty generously and I only had to do two firings on this piece. My enamel's up to the surface of my metal, so I'm ready to stone. I came over to my sink, and I'm going to be starting with a 120 grit alundum stone. And you use your stones to remove the enamel from the metal and even up the surface. And then you're going to use sandpaper to clean up the scratches that are made by the stones. Some water. And I'm going to be stoning in a circular motion. That helps you to be even and keep you from kind of stoning one side more than the other. So I'm only going to work this one area of the cuff so you can see the whole process go through without being here with me all day. You can start to see how the copper edge is being exposed there and the black enamel that was on top of the copper is going away. So I'm going to be looking for that across that whole part that I'm stoning. Most of the enamel has been removed from the face of the metal, but I, there's still a little bit left, but I'm going to get that with the 240 grit aluminum stone. So that's looking good. If you'll notice how much more crisp that edge is compared to this edge that has not yet been stoned. And now we're going to move on to the sandpaper. We're starting with the 220 paper, because it has the most tooth. And I like to fold it over a little bit. Give it some more shape. And then we're just going to clean up those scratches made by the stones. You're going to work your way from 220 to 600. So 
So I'm wrapping up here with my 600 grit paper and it feels nice and soft and smooth and the enamel transitions into the metal nicely. Obviously you'd want to do this to your entire piece. I stoned and sanded the rest of the piece and then I also went ahead and sanded any residual oxidization out from the inside of the cuff as well. I finished it up with a patina because I thought the colors would pop nicely against the black background. This cypress copper clay enamels beautifully and I've had a lot of fun with this project. I hope you'll give it a try and thank you for watching. Visit our learning center at cooltools.us for more cool jewelry making videos. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and be sure to sign up for our email list to be the first to hear about new videos, new products, and other cool stuff from Cool Tools.